Hello and welcome to our Fall 22 second edition of Nittany Watch. I'm Mitchell Carson. And I'm Shana McLaren. Nittany Watch is our student produced digital magazine show bringing you news, sports and information from Penn State Harrisburg and the surrounding region. During each program, we will present an in-depth look at the people, places and events that make Penn State Harrisburg and the Susquehanna Valley a great place to call home. On today's show, we'll fill you in on the road construction that is making our trips around campus a bit tricky. We'll also take you backstage for a look at the making of a Midsummer Night's Dream. And Kylie Altlin and Matt Wiest, our sports team, will join us for their sports report. Before we head into the show, I want to remind everyone that our latest edition of our Blue and White Journal student newspaper can be found in newsstands around campus. You can also find it and many other great sources of information, including the show, on our website at pshblueandwhitejournal.com. Now to our show. Shana, how have midterms been treating you? They haven't been that fun. How about yours? Uh, the same, unfortunately. Have you been, hopefully you've been able to take some breaks. Actually, I have. Oh, there's been a lot of fun stuff happening all over campus. Let's take a look at some of the biggest events at Penn State Harrisburg over the past couple of weeks. This past Wednesday, October 12th, Harrisburg held its annual Bonfire in the Burg, a massive bonfire in the green space next to Olmsted. The fire lasted long into the night with DJ Nugget providing live music. Students were provided with light up accessories and snacked on pizza and ice cream sandwiches while enjoying the warm fire. Saturday brought a full slate of activities for not only students, but also the local community. Starting off the day was the undergraduate open house. Prospective students came to Penn State Harrisburg to learn more about the campus and the range of majors available from faculty. At noon, the Penn State football game against Michigan was streamed on the lawn next to the SEC. Community members joined students in cheering on the Nittany Lions, even though the game ended in a loss for Penn State. I think it's a crucial part for um, not only the community members, but parents and family members and us to celebrate everyone coming together, um, not only for football games, but for academics and for all the things we're doing outside of the classroom as well. Um, I think that's really a crucial part of a university. After the game, We Are Weekend kicked off with games and music for the community. A number of local businesses and Penn State Harrisburg groups provided tables for crafts, face painting, giveaways, and other activities. I just got off my work at Alpo's from 10 to 2. I walk out here, well, the, the things going on here is pretty impressive to me. I see a lot of students here hanging out with their family, and I think it's a great way to, you know, kind of unite a, so it's like a fellowship together. It's a great way to celebrate our family stuff. Yeah, I love it. And, of course, Thursday the 20th brought the highly anticipated Fall Fest. Hosted by the Office of Student Engagement, the Student Government Association, and the Programming and Activities Committee, the event was originally planned to be held the day after the bonfire, but was rescheduled due to rain. Lines at the start of the event wrapped all around Barton Plaza and almost back to Olmsted. Those who were early enough to brave the wait in 50 degree weather were greeted with cozy giveaways for a chilly fall, like blankets, socks, and sweatshirts. Food was available with staples like butternut squash pasta, corn on the cob, and even mini pies. Students also got to try their skill with various games as the DJ played classic Halloween and fall music, like Thriller and the Monster Mash. Even though these events are over, there's still more to come for the rest of the semester and into the next. For Penn State Harrisburg Student Media, I'm Shana McLaren. Wow, that all sounds fun. Oh, it was. You should definitely keep an eye out for more of these big events on Engage or through the Core Do you know if there will be any other events like those coming up? Actually, you're in luck. Fall Fest happens to have a sister event in the spring called the Spring Luau. It's also hosted by PAC, SGA, and the Office of Student Engagement. Keep an eye out for more news about that in the spring semester. Sounds good. We'll be right back with more Nittany Watch after this message.
Welcome back. Hey, Mitch, did you hear about Swimming for Thon? I sure did, Shana. I went out and got the big splash on the event and talked with the woman behind it all, and this swim had a neat twist. Over the past 10 years, Holly Maitland McKenna has been well known for swimming here at Penn State Harrisburg to benefit for Thon. And after 10 years of swimming by herself, Holly decided this year to give it a little twist. event is just a little bit different from what I've done the past 10 years which was me swimming other people came and swam with me but I really did the majority of the swimming and the majority of the fundraising so this year um, just thinking outside the box we decided to do solo swimmers and uh, relay teams so basically I was looking for 46 individuals or teams to come and swim for one hour and raise $460 uh, we filled the pool, I believe, we had 18 lanes filled, so that's a great start. So we're hoping every year it gets bigger and better, and we get more and more people to join us and raise money, FTK. Over 50 participants swam with Holly in Swim for a Cure 2.0. Out of all the participants, the main swimmer with Holly was Rafael Martinez, and Rafael enjoyed himself. I think it was a really fun experience. Like the, uh, for me, the first hour was definitely the hardest, the most challenging. After that, I got more comfortable, and for the next few hours, like my shoulders started hurting. But it kind of, I just went through it, and I always felt like just for at the end of the day, for the kids, so that was my motivation overall. And just seeing everybody else swim was very motivating. More people, and I'm definitely looking forward to next year, trying to get more people. Because the pool was empty at some point for like an hour, just like me and Ollie swimming. I want to get more people in there, so just to get more. Overall, it was a great experience. While Holly has helped many other people with Fawn, Fawn has also meant a lot to her. It means a lot to me because about, it might have been like six or seven years in actually, to my swims, one of my family members, uh, got cancer, little girl, and she's doing fine now, sorry, <laughs> um, and she's a four diamond child, and we're very pleased with um, all the care that she received from the med center, and I'm happy to be able to raise money and donate just a little bit um, for all the kids that need that. For Penn State Harrisburg Student Media, I'm Mitchell Carson. That was an amazing swim, and it's great having others join in as well. They definitely made a big splash. And if you missed out on this swim for Cure 2.0, don't worry. There will be another swim again scheduled in January. The event so far raised over $3,500, and you can still donate to raise money for the event. To donate, you can go to the donor drive link, donate.thon.org, and look up Holly Maitland McKenna. The donation is open until Fawn Weekend, which starts Friday, February 17th, 2023. And, and it's, it's for, for the, the kids. kids. From the pool to the stage, did you know that the Colcarney is putting on a production of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream? I did. I did hear about that, and it's playing the first few days of November. Is the production process underway? It is. Let's hear more about what's going on behind the scenes from our reporters Jelena Chen and Dora Kong. As a day when I show a Midsummer Night's Dream is going to be presented in the Kokani Theater, the crew of the show is engaging in a round of rehearsal. After the casting and some time of the actors to get prepared and tune in with their characters. After their first read through a few weeks ago, the acting crew of the Midsummer Night's Dream joined together for their first acting rehearsal in the Black Box Theater. The thing I really enjoy the most about rehearsals is the fact that it's all like-minded people that are gathered together in the same space. And we know we're all here to do the same thing, which is put our best effort forth, working with one another to make sure the plan just goes really well. So I think what I really enjoy the most is the energy. And I drank it. It was better than any honey I've ever tasted in my life. 
During this rehearsal, the actors are going through their first walkthrough of the entire play. There are lots of different phases to um, putting together a play. Um, one of the first phases is um, table work, where we the director works with the actors at a table, basically, or sitting down um, to talk about uh, like motivation for characters um, and personalities of characters. Um, so at those rehearsals, one of the things that we did for this production was um, try to decide, we have some um, gender neutral type of characters and roles, some gender bending, and so we decided on pronouns for the characters at those table work sessions. Then you move into the blocking phase, and blocking is when the director um, tells this, the actors where they should be and where they should move on the stage. Uh, and we just finished up that phase of rehearsal um, last week. And then this past week, we moved from blocking into um, like line checks where we're, those, the actors are now off book. Mm -hmm. um, so they can't use their scripts anymore. Today was the first day that they were off book for the second half of the show. Theater education has been one of the important parts of PSHR's education and for students who want to enrich their campus experience. Hence, some participation in acting process can both strengthen the engagement for one on campus and enhance one's understanding of theater. I can't wait to see A Midsummer Night's Dream. For more information, please visit the Kolkarni Theater's official website, harrisburg.psu.edu slash theater. If you're looking for a ticket, please visit the website harrisburg.psu.edu slash box office or stop by the box office in the Student Enrichment Center. Shayna, did you ever have the desire to write a good short story? Well, it seems like TV scripts and news articles are what I spend my time on writing now, but I do dabble in writing fiction. Well, now you would actually have a place to go get some recognition. Reporter Matt Weiss sat down with associate librarian Mrs. Emily Moross to talk about the short story competition taking place in the library from now till the end of October. There is a scary story writing contest that takes place from now until the end of October. This writing contest is to get students in the spirit for Halloween. I recently sat down with librarian Emily Moross to get her take on the contest. So across Penn State, we have 11 short edition dispensers that um, students and anyone on campus can print out um, poems and short writing. Uh, so the writing contests usually take place in the fall and spring. So we currently have the Among the Shadows contest running until the end of October and our students can submit either short stories or poems to the contest on that theme of being among the shadows, kind of fall and spooky things. Um, mm. And then during the review process, an editorial board and the public will have the chance to read those stories and vote on their favorites. And then the top stories will be able to be printed from the dispensers on the campuses. Okay, cool. She also mentioned the cash prizes given to the winning stories. So if you're selected as a winner you, and you're a student, um, because uh, faculty and staff and community members can also participate, student winners get $100 in addition to having their stories in the dispensers. With that being said, why not try your hand at writing? The final result might surprise you. Huh, maybe I'll submit my writing for something other than the news. <laughs> we'll be right back with more Nittany Watch after this message. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back. It's late October, which means Penn State Harrisburg is in the middle of registration for the spring semester. Honor students, graduate students, and a lot of upperclassmen have already been able to register for classes, but registration is set to continue into November. To find out when you can schedule your classes, 
take the number of credits you've already earned and add the number of credits you're taking this semester. Once you have your total credits, check out this handy chart to find the date you can register for classes. If you're between two numbers, the later date is when you can register. Incoming freshmen with no college credits won't be able to register until mid-November. Classes fill up quickly, so be sure to meet with your advisor to check on what classes you'll need to take. Students can make an appointment with their assigned advisor through Starfish. Mitch, after registering for classes, it might be a good idea to take a break and enjoy this beautiful campus. Believe me, I get out as much as I possibly can. Have you ever wondered how campus always looks so beautiful? I mean, there's a lot that goes into making it look so appealing. Reporter Matthew Wincoop goes into depth about the groundskeeping. Have you ever wondered how Penn State Harrisburg always looks so nice? It is all because of our campus grounds crew. You'll likely see these people cruising around the campus in their green vehicles or on lawnmowers. These are the people who work to keep our campus looking beautiful. One of the main people behind it all is Mike Roth, the grounds crew supervisor, interim director of the physical plant and maintenance operations, Chuck Garber, made it clear that Roth has enhanced knowledge of the groundskeeping. Garber explains that Roth, quote, takes a lot of pride in his area of work and has a comprehensive understanding of groundskeeping. Roth deals with grounds work on a daily basis. For further detail, Roth can be reached via email at mjr11 at psu.edu or by phone at 717-948-6238. There are several areas where lots of work is done to keep the campus looking appealing. The main walkway outside Olmsted is where colorful flowers and plants can be found. The Vartan Plaza is always decorated with beautiful plants. Outside the front of the Capitol Union building is also where most of the grounds work is done, with an endless row of flowers and plants greeting students as they enter and exit the building. There are also many other places where there is grounds work, especially behind the Nittany Lion statue. Feel free to take a walk around campus to get a full taste of all the amazing work done by our campus grounds crew. For Penn State Harrisburg Student Media, I am Matthew Wincoop. Who knew so much went into making our campus so nice? Be sure to let ground crew members know what a good job they are doing. Oh, I definitely will. However, I must warn you to be careful when driving through campus. You'll certainly notice the construction happening on the main road. Our intrepid reporter Matthew Wincoop has all you need to know. As many students and staff surely noticed by now, there was construction happening at the intersection of College Avenue and O Street. New piping was being installed in the ground in order to allow for proper heating distribution around campus. The construction began on September 26th and ended on October 20th. As of October 21st, the intersection is now fully accessible and students are able to drive there safely. Daniel Barlup, facility supervisor at the heat plant, provided a brief explanation of what exactly the construction entailed. So what the project, what you're seeing is um, actually almost the completion of a major repair that we had to do. Uh, we had a line, underground heating line, that supplies hot water for heating purposes to the buildings here on campus and actually completes a loop. Uh, the pipe, due to age and rust, actually failed. So it leaked and we needed to replace it. So we were able to hurry up in a couple weeks, actually dig the whole intersection up, um, go over, around, and through other utilities, install some new piping here. The contractor's actually just wrapping up now. Um, they'll make the final connections in our manholes, we'll insulate the pipe, and have everything back in service in, uh, by Monday. As for future projects, Barlup explained that the project is ongoing. Replacing more of the piping is a priority, and the plan is for construction to resume in the summer of 2023. There's also construction going on with the ceiling on the west wing hallway of the first floor of the Olmsted building. Students have undoubtedly noticed the ceiling tile missing, and that is so the lighting can be replaced as Barlow further explains. The Olmsted, as you know, was built originally in 1959. 
So the ceilings and floors were the same ceilings and floors that airmen walked when a building was constructed. For the whole entirety of Penn State's history, when this that has been the floors, walls, and ceiling. So we uh, started several years ago, going floor by floor, area by area, and actually renovating them. Uh, we're adding some wayfinding colors, so you actually be able to tell where you're at in a building, which way to go, based upon if it's blue, orange, red, yellow, or green. So that as big as that building is, at over 300,000 square feet, it's a big building. It's easy to get lost in. So we're adding some colors, some uh, bringing it up to where it's fresh. On an interesting side note, the water fountain outside of the SEC and the figurine statue outside the back of SEC are also controlled by the heat plant. A storage apparatus was installed under each of the structures to allow for the water to be preserved over the winter. The heat plant has two big boilers inside it, which are responsible for distributing the hot water throughout the entire campus. There's also the start of the piping that holds the same function. For more information, students can email Daniel Barlow at deb39 at psu.edu or call the maintenance and operations at 717-948-6235. For Penn State Harrisburg Student Media, I am Matthew Incoop. That was great news about our ongoing construction. The Penn State Harrisburg maintenance staff works tirelessly to keep our campus infrastructure intact. Speaking of news, we recently had a speaker come to Penn State Harrisburg talking about that very topic. Oh yeah, um, Amy Goodman. I saw the flyers, but I don't think I heard of her before though. Well, it turns out she's a pretty big name in journalism. I got the chance to sit in on her presentation and talked with her after the event. Please give a warm welcome to Amy Goodman. Amy Goodman, host of Democracy Now!, visited Penn State Harrisburg on October 5th to talk about democracy and her work in journalism. Goodman has worked in journalism for over 35 years and won multiple awards for her journalistic efforts. I almost never take this off in public. The uh, event marked Amy Goodman's first public speaking appearance since before the COVID-19 pandemic. Prior to the event, at 5 p.m., there was a catered VIP reception in the Morrison Gallery where attendees were able to interact with Goodman and various leaders of the campus. At 7, the event kicked off in the Cole Carney Theater with opening remarks from Chancellor Mason. Certainly pleased that you all made a decision because every time we wake up in the morning, we make a decision about what we're going to do. And I think you made the right decision today by joining us this evening. So thank you for taking The event was well attended with representatives from CBS 21 appearing for the start of the event, as well as the heads of various departments on campus. During the lecture, Goodman spoke about democracy and the history of her news company, Democracy Now! When I was asked to do an election show in the United States, I said, but most people in the United States don't even vote and they face nothing like the odds they face in Haiti. But I was curious, why don't most people vote? Or Another point, major talking point of the event was taking back the media from the hands of corporations and other large entities. And what really matters is who frames the story and ensuring that people get to tell their own stories. And if they're in dangerous situations or their livelihoods or families are threatened, someone tells those stories until they can tell their own. Whether it's your official job or um, it's you know just sort of how you see the world, I think it makes you a good global citizen. Holding those in power accountable and breaking the sound barrier by making sure many voices are included in all decisions, no matter what um, job you're in or whatever your walk of life, uh, it is so important that we be more inclusive. For Penn State Harrisburg Student Media, I'm Shana McLaren. I'm sorry I missed that. Sounds like it was an interesting discussion. Oh, it was. You can learn more about Amy Goodman and her news program, Democracy Now! at their official website, www.democracynow.com. When we come back, Kylie and Matt will bring you the latest in sports.
is still a stigma about mental health in our society. And not just in our society here in America, but globally, when you think about culturally or from diverse points of view, you know, they think that, oh, my, my story is different and maybe they've not, not heard my story before. Chances are we have, or we have some experience, or we can get you connected to somebody that, that can. So our webpage now has a virtual resources tab and anyone can click into those anytime. We can provide a safe and confidential space in rooms in our office for people that would want to meet with us. We don't want people, um, quote, suffering in silence. We saw a little bit of that with the pandemic. Uh, we want to be accessible and we want students to be able to reach out to us. For students that may have reservations to consider that there are strength in numbers. Hi, I'm Kylie Altland. And I'm Matt Weiss. We're working together to bring you the best in Penn State Harrisburg sports. Kylie has the latest on women's volleyball. Kylie, it's all yours. Thanks, Matt. Let's get to it. On Sunday, October 16th, the Penn State Harrisburg volleyball team honored their seniors during their Pride Spirit Honor Tri Match. Seniors Megan Morris, Anna Ruff, Grace Gench, Olivia Koikuba, Alexa Henry, and Alyssa Snyder were honored before their first set. The Lions swept both United East opponents, St. Mary's College of Maryland and Wells College. In the first match, the Blue and White defeated St. Mary's in the first three sets with scores of 25 to 21, 25 to 13, and 25 to 9. Emmeline Stevens reached 10 kills against the Seahawks, while Koikiba had 10 digs. In their second match of the day, Penn State Harrisburg wasted no time. The Lions swept the Express in the first three sets with scores of 25 to 13, 25 to 13 again, and 25 to 11. Senior Anna Ruff was credited with 12 kills, while fellow senior Alyssa Snyder had more than 40 assists. The blue and white are currently 12 and 8 overall and 2 and 2 in conference. They will fight to earn themselves a conference playoff spot during a tri match on Saturday, October 22nd at Gallaudet University. In cross country, both the men's and women's teams competed in their first race for the month of October. The Blue and White traveled to Gettysburg for the Aubrey Shank Invitational on Saturday, October 15th. Tatiana Gibson led the way for the women's team. Gibson finished the 6K in 25 minutes to secure the 53rd spot out of 173 total runners. Sam Bishop led the way for the men's team finishing the race in 28 minutes and 54 seconds. With this time, Bishop finished 89th out of a total of 174 runners. The cross-country teams will travel to Lebanon Valley College on Friday, October 21st to compete in the Last Chance Run Fast Invitational. In soccer, the Penn State Harrisburg men's soccer team earned themselves a big win on the road against Wells College on Saturday, October 15th. After defeating the Express in a 12-0 win, the Lions are now 4-0-2 in the United East Conference. Ben Stuckert had himself a day, putting three in the back of the net along with tallying two assists, earning himself his first career hat trick with the Lions. Ethan Cortez scored what would be the game winner in the first three minutes of the first half. Additionally, Kobe Harris, Tyler Maderi, Daryl Lucas, and Anson Portsline all scored in the first half. Regardless of the score, the Lions did not take their foot off the pedal. During the second half, Alexander Bentable, Josh Rogers, Jonathan Ruiz, and Harrison Schaller were accredited with scoring, helping the Lions earn their seventh win of the season. The Lions will head to New York again on Saturday, October 22nd to compete against the Mustangs of Morrisville. After this message, Matt will be back with a look at women's soccer, tennis, and golf. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. And welcome back. The women's soccer team has been wildly successful over the past month. They hold a record of 10, 3, and 3, and have clinched a playoff berth with two games still left on the schedule. The team is also on a five-game win streak. Other big news includes the women's team earning a ranked spot at number 8 in the United Soccer Coaches Regional Soccer Rankings. I recently covered one of their games this week. Let's check it out.
This is Matt Weiss with Penn State Harrisburg Student Media. Tonight we have the women's soccer game against Goucher. The theme is pink, so you better be wearing it. Let's get to it. The team persevered through the 45 degree weather to get a 1-0 victory against Goucher College. The cold definitely slowed down the offensive production for both teams. The lone goal was scored late in the game by Mackenzie Mowry as the Lions defense would take care of the rest as they secured the 1-0 victory on the night. The game's pink theme was to spread awareness for breast cancer. Penn State Harrisburg partnered with the PA Breast Cancer Coalition for the game. This coalition is a nonprofit organization based in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. I had the chance to speak with a member at halftime during the game. Here's what she had to say about the cause. So we are the Pennsylvania Breast Cancer Coalition. We're a statewide nonprofit in Pennsylvania, and we serve women facing breast cancer in Pennsylvania. Do you guys have like a website? We do. Out? Yeah, it's pabreastcancer.org. Awesome. After the game, I had the chance to interview Sydney Hemler. Here are her post-game thoughts. Game today went really well. I think we put together a full 90 minutes. Um, all, all over the field, defensive, offensive side. We were a little slow getting out um, on the offensive side, but uh, we stuck it in. We pressed them like crazy, and they couldn't keep the ball. So that's. We, we were rewarded from it. So, went well today. Today was a good one. I then asked her if the team had anything to improve on before the playoffs. A very specific way, and we train the same way every practice. Um, it's important to us, and we really focus on uh, dialing in every single, every single practice. Um, so, I think we just got to keep doing what we do. We got to um, keep pressing, keep playing our game. We run the ball, we're fast. We, 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 don't, uh, we don't let teams off easy. So we put them under. We just gotta keep doing that. I also got Sydney's thoughts about being the United East Defensive Player of the Week two weeks in a row. <laughs> it feels pretty good. Um, I wasn't expecting it. Um, I don't really expect anything like that, but um, to get to get something like that, it, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you're doing something right. So I, I, it um, it was pretty exciting. So my, one of my uh, best friends, one of the volleyball players, actually was the one that told me. She's like, "Okay, I see." I was like, "What? <laughs> see what?" So that, that was good, but um, it was really rewarding knowing that I must be doing something right. Congrats to the women's soccer team for their victory versus Goucher College. The women continue their winning ways. Good luck to you guys in the playoffs. In other sports news, both the men's and women's tennis teams have finished the fall portion of their schedules. Their last two matches resulted in team losses for the women's team, and these losses come against Lebanon Valley College and Misericordia University. The Lions won two of the three against the Flying Dutchman in doubles play. The duo of Olivia Bandini and Brianna DeSantis won the number one matchup 8-7. It was then followed up by Nazali Ortiz-Kreiner and Sofia Bandini winning the number two spot 8-3. The singles action is where LVC took advantage. Sofia Bandini had the only singles win when she went up against LVC's Haas in the number four matchup. Penn State Harrisburg would then go on to be defeated in the match 6-3. The Lady Lions would then travel to Misericordia for their next match on October 9th. Some notable stats from the day include the duo of Sarah Schaub and Gabby Sabatos winning a close match against Misericordia's duo of Cridge and Dendervich. The final of that match was 8-6. Sofia Bandini secured the only singles win for the team as the Lions lost 2-7. On the men's side, the duo of Andrew Schreck and Nick Roan played in the day's number one spot. They played really hard and just come up short 5-8. The same was true for the pair featuring Rishikesh Singh and Evan Stilwell as they played well but could not put away LVC's Beck and Mick Lucas. The team would lose 9-0. The fortunes would flip for the Mets team as they would go on to sweep Misericordia 9-0. All players won their matches. Nick Roan and Andrew Shrek got right with a 6-8 victory. Zijun U would dominantly win his sets 6-3 and 6-2. Derwin Merka also would win his matches big with a 6-2 and 6-1 victories. In golf, the team's 2022 year has officially ended due to the cold weather. The squad's recent action featured them in the Dickinson's Fall Invitational and the Bloomsburg Husky Invitational. These twin tournaments happened in quick succession on the, on the 8th and on the 10th. The Lions had four golfers compete as they shot 350 in Dickinson's Fall Invitational. They would finish ninth place for the day. Josh Africa had the best performance, shooting just two above par to earn a tie for seventh place in the field of 56 golfers. Matthew Redman was the next best for the Lions with 11 above par for the day. This placed him with a shared finish of 35th place. On Monday the 10th, they traveled to the Bloomsburg Husky Invitational. 
Josh Africa stayed hot through the cool breeze for the Lions. He was the low man for the team, shooting nine above par. This gave Josh a share of 22nd place for the day. Golf will return to action in the spring, where there will be warmer weather. After this message, Kylie will join me for our intramural sports report. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. Please don't say that. Please don't say that. Your brother suffered critical head trauma, extensive cerebral hemorrhaging. We did everything we could. I'm sorry we couldn't save him. It's all my fault. Should have not driven. You should have left the driving to someone else. The test showed a significant level of alcohol in your blood. We've contacted your family. They should be arriving shortly. Did you know that intramural sports have been in full swing since the beginning of the semester? Oh, no way. I actually didn't know that. Nice. Did you know that the intramural soccer uh, league tournament had their big championship game this last weekend? I did. The games turned out incredible. Matthew Wankoop and Mitchell Carson have the story. The playoffs for intramural soccer kicked off on October 11th and ended with the championship round on October 12th. The top-seeded team, Gold Diggers, received a first-round bye. The remaining teams faced off on the first day to see who would be advancing to the second round. The number two seed, Devil's Chaos, took on the number seven seed, Feta Cheese. Number three seed, The Goon Squad, faced off against the number six seed, For the Queen. The number four seed, Brown FC, played against the number five seed, Cows Go Moo. After three hard fought matches, the matchups for the second round were confirmed, with Gold Diggers making their playoff debut the next night. Bobby Sharma, captain of Cows Go Moo, gave his thoughts on his team's win and how he believes they advanced to the next round. Uh, we just played our quarterfinal game that ended at a 5 4 win for us. I think the overall intensity of the game was really good from start to finish. Even though there were some like bad calls during the game, I think everyone had fun and that's the point of this game. Um, I think um, as a team we did really well, kept our composure and um, football should be played from the heart, not the head. And I think we did that today. Everyone had fun. I like seeing us smiling for once and I'm smiling too, so good days. The next night, the remaining four teams faced off as they tried to get to the championship game. The first two games decided who would be the final two teams to play for the championship. In the end, Cows Go Moo were victorious and were crowned as champions of fall 2022's intramural soccer. One of the players from Cows Go Moo, Adam Nasir, provided his insights as to how he believes his team won the championship. Uh, hi, my name is Adam. I'm from Kaosgumu. So today is our winning winning match. Yeah, we did win the IMs. So, so far the season has been very well. My teammates really enjoyed it and I, I personally enjoyed it as well. And everyone, I think, other in like other teams, they played so well as well. So I think that it's a good year. Yeah. For Penn State Harrisburg Student Media, I'm Mitchell Carson. And I'm Matthew Wincoop. Thank you, Matt and Mitchell. What great games they were. And congratulations to the Cows Go Moo team on being the champions. The next intramural sports up and running are flag football and bowling with dodgeball scheduled for November. That's all for this edition of Our Sports Report. Tune in every month as we dive into all of Penn State Harrisburg sports. To keep up to date with Penn State Harrisburg Athletics, visit the Penn State Harrisburg Athletics site. To stay connected, use the handle PSHBG Athletics on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Thanks, Kylie and Matt. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. You can watch our show on the Penn State Harrisburg Student Media YouTube channel or check out our link on the PSH Student Media website, PSHBlueAndWhiteJournal.com. 
for all of us here at Nittany Watch and WPSH-TV, thank you for watching.